Colonel Alan West, one of the bravest and wisest members of Congress. And already, <clears throat> even though he's only a freshman still, a leading voice in the Republican Party. Colonel West is also the number one congressman the Democratic National Committee has targeted for defeat. In the coming national election, which promises to be the ugliest in our lifetime, he will be a prime focus of the Democrats' incoming fire. Have you noticed that the Republicans most viciously targeted by the Democrats are women and blacks? There's a reason for that. Democrats will tell you that it is because they care about women and blacks, but that just tells you what you already know, that Democrats are hypocrites and liars. Democrats control the school systems of every major inner city in America, from Harlem to Detroit to South Central, Los Angeles. They control them 100% and have for more than 50 years. There is no greater oppressor of poor black and Hispanic Americans than those responsible for these failing schools. Democrats run them as a jobs program for adults and a cash cow for their left-wing union base. Every year, the lives of millions of poor black and Hispanic children are destroyed by the Democrats who run these schools and fail to teach in their classrooms but Republicans are too polite to mention it. Democrats view politics as war conducted by other means. A fact that Alan West is the only Republican I have known to recognize. Democrats view women and blacks as cannon fodder in their war. They are not ends in themselves, but a means to power. If Democrats lost just 10 or 20 percent of the black vote nationally, they would lose virtually every state in the union. That's why they hate and fear Colonel West. They hate him because he is black, and they fear him because he will not fold under fire. Democrats have stamped everyone in this country with a racial or gender tag, doled out privileges on the basis of the tags, and deployed the so-called race card as a weapon of choice. Race card is a euphemism for the reflexive racism that is the Democrats' first and last resort. Republicans respond by pretending not to notice race, or gender for that matter. The Republican Party of California does not have a single female elected official. How politically obtuse is that? Why are there so few black elected officials in the Republican Party? Because Republicans think that they are above noticing race or gender and make no sustained effort to recruit blacks or women. That would be acting like Democrats. Well, politically speaking, if you want to understand the art of political combat, study the Democrats. They are very good at it. Democratic attacks are always directed at rich, white Americans and their, Republican and their Republican defenders and are always conducted in behalf of poor Americans and minorities, particularly black Americans, the victims. Here's why Democrats are terrified of an articulate black Republican like Colonel West who will not be intimidated by their racist tactics. He will blow their cover and destroy their game. I loved it when Colonel West joined the Congressional Black Caucus. <laughs> Uninvited. <laughs> In effect, he said, you've got a race club, and I'm the correct race, so here I am. <laughs> Until that moment, the Congressional Black Caucus was a group of extremist left-wingers which said to Americans, the left cares about black people and the Democrats represent black people and Republicans don't. In one gesture, Colonel West blew the lid off this charade and said, well, no. Actually, black people can make up their own minds, just like everyone else. And this black man understands that Democrats are bad news for African Americans 
as they are for all Americans. At an event last night, Colonel West pointed out that the head of the Congressional Black Caucus recently said that if Obama, a black Democrat, wasn't in the White House, they would be marching on Washington. Why? Because while the nation is suffering from a disgraceful 9% unemployment race, as Colonel West pointed out, 17% of black Americans are out of work, 20% of black males, and 45% of black teenagers. Obama and the Democrats have pursued policies that have devastated the black community. But most Republicans are too proper, too above it all, to mention that black America has suffered more from Democratic policies than any other group. That Democrats' policies have racial consequences. Republicans are very good at talking about the current economic crisis in terms of numbers and ratios and deficits. But they are very poor at talking about it in terms of the people that democratic policies hurt. They know that the subprime mortgage crisis was created by Bill Clinton and Barney Frank and Obama's acorn criminals. That's a good beginning. But what about the victims? Who are the number one victims of the democratic housing tsunami. They are poor, largely black and Hispanic Americans who were snookered into buying homes they couldn't afford and then lost them. How traumatic is that? But even worse is the devastation visited on the black middle class. If you are rising on the economic ladder in America, your chief investment is your home. That's where your money is. And because of the mortgage crisis created by Bill Clinton, Barney Frank, and Obama's acorn, home values have dropped 30%. In this crisis, middle class African Americans have lost $100 billion. Democrats don't want any Republicans, and especially articulate black Republicans, telling black America that. I've introduced many speakers on this platform and many elected officials, but none who have inspired me or given me such confidence in the American future as Alan West. Colonel West was born into a military family in Atlanta, Georgia, the home of Martin Luther King. Four generations of the West family have served in the United States military, defending our country. Colonel West joined the Army after graduating from the University of Tennessee and also has a master's degree in political science from Kansas State. In the Army, he was a member and training officer in the 325th Airborne Battalion Combat Team, and then assigned to the 1st Infantry Division, where he was a commanding officer in the 6th Field Artillery Regiment. During this service, he was promoted to captain and was then deployed to Iraq during the Gulf War, where he participated in Desert Storm and Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He returned to the United States to participate in the Reserve Officers Training Program and was named ROTC Instructor of the Year in 1993. He was then assigned to the 2nd Infantry Division and promoted to Major. He was then made the Executive Officer of the 377th Field Artillery Regiment. In 2002, he was promoted to Colonel and made a Battalion Commander in the 4th Infantry Division he was then deployed to Iraq for the final battle against Saddam Hussein and his monster regime. While in Iraq, Colonel West was nearly court-martialed for attempting to pry information out of an Iraqi police officer who was suspected by an intelligence specialist of participating in a plot to ambush Colonel West and his men. Colonel West's crime was using rough methods to get information which might save the lives of his men. This included the charge that he fired his weapon next to the man's head and threatened to kill him, a method which immediately produced the information. <laughs> Colonel West was eventually fined $5,000 by his own government for the incident and retired after 22 years of service. At his hearing, 
Colonel West was asked if he would act differently if the same circumstances came up again. He said, if it's the lives of my soldiers at stake, I would go through hell with a gasoline can. The most, <laughs> the most important characteristic of a political leader is his moral fiber. If our leaders can't stand up under fire, if they won't protect us and our country, we are lost. Alan West was nearly court-martialed during a Republican administration, which was already folding under the attacks from the left. After voting for the war, the Democratic Party turned against it and conducted a five-year scorched earth campaign against our men and women in arms. They portrayed their own country as an aggressor without principle and their commander-in-chief as evil, a man who launched a war for no reason and lied to get hundreds of thousands of men and women killed. The Democrats accused their country of wantonly murdering Iraqi civilians and of deceiving the American people to lure them into a war against an adversary who was no threat. And no Republican fought back. The commander in chief remained silent and never defended himself. The democratic saboteurs who conducted a psychological warfare campaign against their own military and their own country, who called their commander a traitor and their military personnel torturers and killers, got away with it with no consequences with leaders on the one side who will attack our country and on the other who will not defend it, we are lost. We have a long way to go and a lot to make up to get back to an America that we can be proud of, to an America that is proud of itself. If there are men and women who can lead us back and restore our nation, Colonel Allen West is certainly one of them and is a model to others and to all of us, Colonel West.